Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. First of all, I want you all to take a moment to give a round of applause to Mr. because he talked about something very interesting that I'm going to talk about values. So can you all please give a round of applause to Mr. All right, so let's start with my presentation. Um, this presentation is based on a research paper that has already been published, and of course the data was collected from the civil service. Now, before I begin with the presentation, I would ask a question, okay? I don't want an answer. I want you all to think about it, okay? Why did you join public service? Why did you join civil service? I will tell you my answer, they're sure, but for now, I want you to think about it. Now, how many of you know this gentleman? He is Winston Churchill, a very important political figure in the British history, right? He said, we make a living by what we get. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life what we give. Interesting, right? All right? Okay. Now, Maldives has embarked on several reform initiatives to create a modern civil service. And what is more uh, interesting than a conference like this? Now, when you talk about modernizing the civil service or the public sector, what we see across in most of the countries, including the OECD countries, is introducing borrowed management practices from the public sector. Now, this is based on the New public management theory, which is based on principal agent model, which assumes you civil servants as being homo economicus, rational, and selfish individuals. Now, 80% of the OECD countries, they have implemented performance-related pay. We are also running the race to implement the performance-related pay. But my dear friends, okay, this is not very effective. Why? Okay, because, okay, uh, Recent researchers are saying that those who join the public sector are special. Okay, why are they special? Okay, this is because, okay, those who join the public sector are different. You are special, okay? So give a round of applause. Okay, why are you special? Because you have altruism, you have moral heroism, you have patriotism of benevolence, which makes you a better civil servant and which also makes you a better role model. Okay, now since the theorization of public service motivation, my Perry and Weiss in their seminal uh, paper, uh, Motivational Basis for pub of Public Service, this has become one of the most research areas in the public administration. Now I had a problem. You know what my problem was? <laughs> I wanted to know how can I contribute in improving the job performance of the civil servants, okay? And I wanted to understand, from your level, what can I do? Okay, now, when you talk about improving, when you talk about creating meaning and purpose of life, which you are all here, I believe, okay, you cannot do unless the work is designed in such a way. Now, how many of you actually spend time on playing solitaire in your computer? We don't play that anymore, right, do we? Okay? So to create meaning and purpose in life, work design plays a crucial role. And the psychological needs would remain unmet unless the job itself is designed in such a way that uh, you know, it will create public service motivation. Okay? So we must understand that this is context dependent and civil servants cannot perform their duties well if job characteristics do not create the intrinsic motivation and job opportunities uh, and job design cannot provide uh, opportunities for meaningful work. Now let's talk about job design. Oh, it came too quickly. Okay, now there are critical issues related to job design in the civil service. And uh, uh, maybe things have improved right now. Okay, now in a report uh, based on evaluation undertaken by the UNDP and the Civil Service Commission, uh, they found out three important issues. Now, the first one is job descriptions lack consistency and critical information such as academic knowledge, working knowledge, the number of staff supervised, budget managed, working condition, and so on. 
and this information was lacking apparently in 95% of the evaluated job description. Titles do not reflect the actual job undertaken. For instance, a senior supervisor was a driver, similarly an ad assistant director was an administrative officer. Now ask yourself, again this question, I don't want an answer, okay? Does your job title reflect what you do? The other day I met a friend of mine who said she has a master's qualification. So that I am sitting in the counter, okay? So I will stop there for now. Next one is inappropriate supervision structure. It was noted that the section head was in charge of three or four unit head. At the same time, the average span of control is either eight or 12. So the analysis reflects issues about how jobs have been designed where you are unclear, okay? Unclear uh, regarding what you need to do. And there is a lot of chaos and confusion. So we all talk about salary. Salary is low, we know that, right? I know your salary is low, okay? So while on the surface, salary and remuneration seems to be comparatively low, your job is also utterly frustrating, okay? And there is a clear mismatch. Uh, there is a clear mismatch between the qualification and the skills, okay? And furthermore, I would also like to highlight, okay, one of the strategic thrusts of Maldives Civil Service Commission is to create a, a motivated, resilient, knowledgeable, and competent and dignified civil service, and to develop a dynamic, liege, agile, and competent organization. The question is, how do you do this? How do you do this, okay, when there is lack of attention in creating and motivation skill? So how do you achieve quality service through quality people and quality performers? All right, okay. Now, there are a lot of things I can discuss in the literature, but um, I would say uh, the main research objective is to study the effect of job characteristics on job performance and analyze how public service motivation mediates this relationship. Now, bear with me, okay. I am an academician. I talk a lot of theory, okay, but I hope you will bear with me today, okay. So today I'm going to talk about the job characteristic model, okay, which explains uh, how these three psychological conditions can be created. So basically a job that is designed well should enable a person to experience meaningfulness of work, experience responsibility for the outcomes of the work, and also knowledge of the results of the work. Now this becomes very, very important because your job pays you less, and also you have Gen Z. Okay, you have Gen Z, and this is shown in previously by Shatter research. I will also demonstrate to you the same result, okay? Now, what is meaningfulness? Meaningfulness is to degree to which an employee experiences meaningfulness, and this is depending on how you perceive the job is meaningful, where you, wh whether you feel that you are a so socially significant person, basically you don't want to be treated like a second class citizen, okay? And this will come if there is task, uh, uh, skill variety, task identity, and task significance. Now, what is experience and responsibility for the work outcome? The degree to which you feel personally responsible and accountable for the work you are doing, okay? And this will come if there is autonomy in the job. Okay, how many of you can make independent decisions? Now, knowledge is the degree to which an individual knows and understands continuously how effectively he or she is performing in the job, and this will come from feedback, and we have continuously heard of people providing feedback, okay? Now, if these three things are there, maybe magic will happen. Okay, we don't know. Okay, it can lead to increase in job performance, lower turnover, lower absenteeism, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, let me... I don't want to talk about everything, but let's talk about task identification, which will allow an employee to complete whole and identifiable tasks rather than only doing part of the job. Now, the bureaucratic classification of job in the Maldives civil service with multiple supervisors and now with multiple political appointees doesn't allow an employee with the right skill and talent to complete a whole task without being referred from one supervisor to another supervisor. All right, okay. Now, uh, before I touch on the public service motivation, just uh, to uh, highlight a little bit on job performance. What is job performance? 
You're all being evaluated, always being evaluated, right? Okay. Now, I believe job performance is your ability to add value to the organization through your work, through your behavior, through your attitude. Okay? There are several dimensions that can define job performance. Task performance, which is in your job description, contextual performance, organization citizenship behavior, counterproductive work behavior, innovative, and the list continues. I will touch on two things. One is task performance consists of being able to take, undertake specific tasks given by the job description, which is re very related to you. And adaptive performance refers to the person's ability in modifying their work and related to behavior to respond to changes. So we have a lot of things when you talk about ta adaptive performance, which you're always doing, handling crisis in emergency situation, you know, changing the agenda in the last minute, <laughs> you know, and I can see when you're, because I happen to be a civil servant, you know what my first job is? I was in the public service division. Okay, so this is where my story started. So I understand a lot about civil servants today. Okay, now let's go to the public service motivation theory. Okay, now I was also thinking, what is public service motivation? Another motivation theory? It's not a motivation theory, all right? Now, this is actually presented in the initial formulation of PSM that individual joins the public sector uh, because he wants to fulfill, again, certain needs. This is norm-based needs, okay? So we start with rational. Implies that their action would maximize individual utility by joining the pub public sector. So one of the motive for uh, joining the public sector is rational because it is altruistic. So if you can actually participate in public policy decision, again, I'm not sure how many of you are able to do that, okay? It will actually create ut uh, ut uh, rational. Now, norm-based motive argues the desire to serve the nation, their loyalty to the government, their profession, and the concept of social equity. Now, what is social equity? Okay, so, so you heard Musa talking about, you know, helping some guy, uh, some guy helping an old lady, right? Okay, so social equity means helping the unrepresented or the less privileged in the society. Okay, and so sometimes the reason why somebody joins public service, because you want to help genuinely these people. Okay, because you are part of the society at the end of the day. And um, uh, effective more component arises due to patriotism of benevolence, okay? The patriotism of benevolence arises due to love for all people and love for the regime and others, and the patriotism of benevolence is a particular emotional state termed as moral heroism by Rickson and Hurt. Moral heroism is an emotional state, emotional response to humankind because of your willingness to sacrifice for others, okay? And I really believe you are very special people, okay? One round of applause, okay? Now, these are the traits, these are the traits or the characteristics which you should be having, okay? Attraction to public policy, okay? Commitment to public interest, compassion and self-sacrifice. Now, attraction to public policy is the extent to which you would like to participate in public policy decision Commitment to public interest is whether a person views the service provided as a civil responsibility for the common good. Compassion is the extent to which uh, an individual, uh, compassion is the extent to which you empathize with the less privileged people and self-sacrifice is whether you are willing to sacrifice your interest in the benefits of others. Uh, now, uh, uh, I want to say that public service motivation, when you talk about public service motivation, it is not intrinsic motivation, okay? It is not pro-social motivation because this is your desire to help someone who has nothing to do with you. And it's also because you don't want to serve your inflated ego. All right, so there are many definitions of PSM. Just one definition I want to highlight here. This is given, okay? The belief, values, and attitudes that go beyond self-interest and organizational interests that concern the interest of a larger political entity and then motivate individuals to act accordingly whenever appropriate. Now, um, this is the conceptual framework. 
Based on this, I have three research hypotheses. Three is testing direct positive association. And the fourth hypothesis actually tests the mediation effect. Now, um, I can't take a lot of time to explain you the methodology, okay? Because like, how did I develop the questionnaire? How did I take the uh, items? Did I do an expert review and everything? It's very clearly given in my research paper. How did I choose the population? Okay, what was included, what was excluded? Uh, how, what is the data cleaning process and everything? And basically, two types of analysis, descriptive and multivariate data analysis I have done. I have undertaken exploratory factor analysis to determine how the factor structure emerge. I have done confirmatory factor analysis and everything required to undertake a structural measurement model. Okay, now let's quickly go to the results. Nothing surprising in this again, right? We have a female dominated workforce, which is 50, uh, which is 56.5 percent. Okay, based on the sample I got. So generally we have more females. And uh, on this, I also want to know, when you looked into, because I have done a cross-step anal analysis with gender and age, uh, we have more than 40.3% between 29 to 35 age category. And again, in that way, we have more females. What does this mean? These are older people in the reproductive age group. And we said our population is getting low, and of course, we want to increase the birth rate. Yes, okay, and we want to also ensure that our ladies are in the job. Okay, when you look into the education, okay, you have a highly educated workforce. Okay, 28.1% with master's degree, 24.1% with bachelor's degree. And on top of it, I did a cross step to see who is more educated? Our ladies, our girls. Okay, of course, okay, of course, uh, we also know that. More girls actually do join university. <laughs> That's also there, okay. And uh, when you looked into the uh, age and work experience, so, uh, uh, most of them are working for one to four years, which is 25.9 percent, and five to nine years, 21.6 percent. Again, you have more females here, okay. Now, uh, this is the results of the descriptive, uh, the variables. Now, it was tested on a Likert scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And for the job performance, it was tested from uh, never to always, okay? Never to always. So when you rate yourself, you always do the job. Well, I believe in you, all right, okay? Now, uh, for job characteristics, the mean is good, okay? Because it's like 3.84. Uh, I was in a hurry today and I forgot my glass. Okay, and then uh, two, three dimensions of the job characteristics, uh, task identity and feedback from job and autonomy. This is between three to four, whether you were unable to decide or agree, but it shows that there's something that you need to improve. And for the public service motivation, one particular dimension scored less. Other things, you're all very good, you're all very empathetic, you're all very compassionate, okay? But when it comes to attraction to public policy, you're not sure. Okay, job performance, excellent, okay, star. So ask your supervisors that I told you, you got a star, star okay? Strongly agree, going leaning towards strongly agree, from agree to strongly agree, okay? Now, uh, this is the summary of CFA result. Usually before when we do the structural model, uh, we do the confirmatory factor analysis for each construct. We check for construct validity, we check for discriminant validity, we check for convergent validity, and all thresholds are met. And then I've checked two forms of reliability. One is Crombeck alpha, you can see more than 0.7. And also, if you are uh, undertaking the structural model, you should also ch check composite reliability, which should also be more than 0 0.7. And there are the fitness index given here. We can talk about this later. Okay, this is a structural model. So all the cute things that are in boxes, those are all the items, the questions, okay? And 55%, 0.55, 55% of the job performance is explained by these two variables, okay? But uh, apparently, PSM is defined in the context of more or less with compassion and self-sacrifice. Okay, now hypothesis testing. I have tested four hypotheses. These are the three hypotheses, okay? It is positive, it is significant. Look at the T values, more than 1.96. Let me explain just one hypothesis, 
Okay, for example, job characteristics and job performance. What does this mean? You have 0.327 is the DICE estimate. Now, which means with every one unit increase in the uh, job characteristics, job performance is likely to increase by 0.327 units. And similarly, with every one unit increase in job characteristics, public service motivation also would increase 0.719 units. Then, third hypothesis is also the same. Now, for the fourth hypothesis, which was undertaken using bootstrap technique, uh, this is partial mediation, okay? Why both direct and indirect effect is significant, okay? So, uh, these are for the hypothesis. Later on, okay, I'm available for coffee here. Okay, you have a question, anyone interested to do research, okay, please feel free to come and talk to me. Um, what are the discussions on implications? I think this is what is most needed and urgent here. Now, the first thing I want to know is that just like the previous studies, this study also has demonstrated the positive impact of job characteristics on job performance similar to other research. This study also has demonstrated that public service uh, job characteristics does enhance your public service motivation values. Okay, public service motivation is having a positive effect on job performance. Now let's talk about uh, the difficult things. Okay, now when you're talking about the difficult thing, there are a lot of things that you need to improve. Okay, autonomy, feedback, and uh, task identity and other aspects of the job characteristics. Now, if you don't allow an employee to take autonomy, who will be responsible at the end of the day? If your employees are not interested in taking autonomy or they're afraid, you need to develop your SOPs, okay? And also, you need to train them to make decisions, all right? You need to provide feedback, and the feedback should come from those who are receiving the service, and at the same time, the feedback can be linked to your performance appraiser. Okay, you need to assign work where employees have to use different, different skills, okay, not just writing letters and getting them signed all the time, okay, or sharpening the pencil for someone. Okay, I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing all these things, but I'm saying you have a qualified employee, make use of that employee, okay? And then you should be able to feel like you are completing part of the job. Otherwise, okay, why are you not able to complete the whole job? Because I'm very sorry to say, everyone is doing part of the job, which means there are too many employees. Okay, that's why I say talking about hard things is sometimes very, very difficult. Okay, so therefore, the HR practitioners of Maldives and civil servant must create more fulfilling jobs. And this research has demonstrated. And also, okay, I want to say, I want to recommend the Maldives civil service to do a proper job analysis. Evaluate the jobs you have and identify what needs to be improved. And furthermore, okay, I have the civil service commission and CSTI sitting here. When you are recruiting employees, okay, recruit employees, those who will possess or those who has this public service motivation trait, because these people will be a better fit. This is done in other advanced countries. Okay, let's do this in the Maldives. Okay, and which means in the civil service ex examination, in the interviews you are conducting, you need to check. Okay, and now you will tell me, what about political employees? Well, somebody else should answer that question, right? Okay, next one is create an environment Okay, create an environment that will uh, uh, support and foster PSM values, okay? So that means they are, should be done through organizational identification where civil service employees identify with the public sector officers to provide service. And also, <coughs> it means connecting with the service receivers. Now, every day I meet with my students and it makes me happy, okay? But I know those of you who are at the service provision, sometimes you meet, sometimes you don't meet. And if you have a software, you don't have to meet at all, right? Okay, but those who are in the working in the councils, I think uh, this will be helpful, okay? And also provide training to improve the awareness and also enhance PSM values, okay? 
Uh, the training programs conducted now are primarily focused on improving soft skill or technical skills, and this will not enhance PSM values unless these civil service employees are enlightened about being a true me meaning, about being a true meaning of, uh, about being a true civil servant. And finally, <laughs> I want to say that uh, if you want to uh, if you want to, um, if you want to retain the uh, highly uh, those uh, employees with higher public service motivation, you may be thinking, okay, we can recruit them. What about after that? Okay, if the jobs doesn't actually help them, then uh, their public service motivation values will not enhance. So therefore, altruism may be overshadowed by poorly designed jobs. Okay, and finally, I want to say this. Maldives civil service need to modernize the job to retain and support a highly educated workforce. It is evident that those who join the Maldives civil service, they are selfless and uh, highly educated. So there remains a need to improve elements of job design to reduce bureaucracy and a high level of formalization and centralization to create a modern public sector. Now, before I conclude, all this time I was speaking in English. I will make a statement in Diwahi now. Okay. I don't want to board again. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. I don't want to go to the house of five. गांव में हित में कोरा बेड़ो में बेहवर में अंगे बती बे ये वैगन तिब्बत में अंगे बती बे ऐमी उन अंगे फुरसत नो देवे कम बन्या तिब्बे फुलन तिब्बे नो वहाँ का हाला मॉडर्न सिविल सर्विसिंग उफेदी ताने थोए शुक्रिया देंगा लोगों ने मैं हर पब्लिश को पेपर्स था कि आलम बेड़ो फुलो आ बेफुला कमिज्या रफसिया 